It is day number 48 of the $1,000 account challenge, and today I am up 10% in the account or $531 of the total portfolio balance. Now, if you don't know, my name is Gates. I'm taking $1,000 and I'm day trading options to see how far I can grow this account. And I'm not gonna lie to you, today I totally muffed a trade. I had a huge blunder that cut into my profits. It probably could have been a $1,000 day, yet again for the third day in a row, but I muffed a trade. So we'll talk about it and see what happens. We're gonna start off with the winner though. Straight off the day trade watch list, we had Meta as a short idea below $500. So moving to the five minute time frame on Meta, we get the opening drop down below the previous day's closing price. We get a rally up to that previous day's closing price and a rejection of that previous day's closing price. So what we're seeing here effectively is something known as a green to red move where the stock fails to hold the PDC as support, ultimately treats it as a point of resistance and then drops lower. That's the move that we were capitalizing on today. Now, signals were given for this trade, so we are going to go to the alert room and I'm going to walk you through all of those signals. Meta mentioned initially, watch for a short entry. That's a previous day's close, a PDC reject so far. We're waiting for the $500 break. And prior to that, I mentioned it two more times. Meta loaded short and I'm giving you the contracts literally two minutes after the open, three minutes after the open. No position yet. And then I mention it again about five minutes later. Meta, watch for the short entry if this cannot reclaim the previous day's close. So I'm telling you what's going on. Meta breaking the PDC. If it cannot reclaim that PDC, we are looking to take this short. Um, then we're, we're watching AMD at the time. We're going to get to that in just a second. Meta, uh, again, a reminder, watch for the short entry. That's a PDC reject. So I'm So I give you the contract short. Then I tell you what the trade plan is if it can't reclaim the pdc then i'm telling you it is rejecting the pdc wait for a break of 500 and then i tell you i'm about to take meta and then right after i sent that i just went ahead and took the position meta took entry short i give you the contracts reminder i give you the exact fill price and i give you the stop loss that's at 9 47 a.m eastern so moving to the one minute time frame that is right here on this breakdown. Now, what I did was market buy into this weakness because we had a period of consolidation prior. So traders always ask me, Gates, how do you know when to market buy versus when to limit buy? And my answer is if you have a period of consolidation prior to a break of a significant level, typically you want to market buy because it's already consolidated, right? So you're not always going to get that perfect pullback retest that you're looking for. The other scenario is if you get a one fell swoop fast move through the trigger level without any consolidation prior to the trigger break or just after the trigger break. Typically, you want to just wait and stay patient, not chase that move down, and then wait for the pullback retest. So not only do we have a rejection of the previous day's closing price here and a break through the $500 whole number, we also have a pattern here known as a head and shoulders. We have a left shoulder here, a rally up to give you a peak, that's gonna be your head, then the right shoulder here, and then your breakdown follow through there, breaking the neckline and momentum down towards the low of day. By the way, why we took profits where we did right here was because of two reasons. Number one, we were already up 20% on the position. Number two, it's very close to low of day. So I've made a podcast podcast episode. It's called Trade the Flow podcast, where I talk about different exit strategies. And one of those exit strategies that I talk about there is the high of day and low of day exit strategy. Go give that a listen. Again, it's called Trade the Flow podcast. Great, great episode to listen to how to exit a position properly. So back to the alert room meta, we are up 10%, still holding up 15%, up 20%. I give you a screenshot where we're up nearly 24% on the position. I'm up almost $700. And then I closed there at the low of day at 9.49 a.m. So kind of as this started to bounce back up, I didn't bottom tick this by any means. As it started to bounce back up, I think I closed it about halfway through uh, this candle. And then great thing that I did, right? Because look at this move that followed. We would have actually been down on this position if we held on to it for another two minutes. So taking profits when they were offered here really was something that paid. Now let's move over to AMD. This is the next one. 
that was on the watch list, and it was a long idea, straight off the day trade watch list, long idea above $206. Now, we do get the opening consolidation here. I wasn't quite prepared to market by AMD on this break because it happened so fast, and it was an extension move from the low of day all the way up to that high of day. That was nearly a 2% move. So against better judgment, I decided not to take this trade even though I told you in the alert room that we had the contracts loaded, right? AMD loaded this long. Here's the contracts. Wait for a dip entry. Uh, we just never got that dip after it broke 206 and it ran all the way up to highs of $211. So seeing this, I utilized something known as Fibonacci retracements. Now I talked about this in my last video. Fibonacci retracements are just a great tool to identify where a stock could potentially pull back to following some sort of significant initial move. And so the way it works is that you're going to draw a trend line from the start of the move all the way up to the peak of the move. And that's going to give your Fibonacci levels. So what I was looking at here was the 50% retracement line, and that's going to be placed right at about 207.5. So when we get the breakdown, I didn't take the initial entry at 23.6% because it was just too much of a move. Usually the larger the move, the larger the pullback is going to be. So I didn't trust that initial pullback because it just wasn't far. It wasn't a big enough dip for me to like it. Uh, but I did like the pullback down to the 50% retracement line. And so we get that move exactly right here. Uh, so I took my entry long. We're up about 10%, I think, on the peak of this trade. But I left enough room here to average into the trade. And uh, unfortunately, we didn't get the follow through up to the high of day. We do get a sell off back towards the 61.8% line, right? Back towards 206. So I take my entry long right here. Again, I'm averaging to the position, right? I'm lowering down my cost basis. And by the way, all of this is noted here in the uh, in the alert room of the Discord server. Uh, if you want to pause and read this, you can. Um, so I take my entry here, averaging into the trade at the 61.8% line, and we dip right below that. It kind of concerned me a little bit. Uh, I know it was holding above 206, which, is, which was our trigger level, but what I didn't want to happen was AMD to fully sell off and then me lose all the profits on the day that I made on Meta, right? Um, so I, I just exited the position. Once we got a little bit of a bounce, I exited the position at a 10% loss here. However, this is the trade that I muffed. If I had held, this would have been well over a 20% gain because the stock did indeed hold 206 as support and did rally back up to 209. So literally a $3 move off of this bounce. So how could I have traded this a little better? Um, maybe for one, not have panicked out of the position. It was holding 206. I should have been okay with that. I think if I had held one or two more minutes, I would have been all right. Um, so not panicking out of the position might have saved me here. Number two, not taking my entry as early as I did. I probably could have just stayed a bit more patient and taken my initial entry here and then averaged here rather than taking my initial entry $2 off the trigger level. I think that that was kind of assuming a little bit uh, too much risk. And number three, I could have used less capital on the trade and still traded this way. That might have kept me into the, in, in the position. Uh, the contracts that I chose are a bit more pricey than what I have been picking recently for the account challenge. Um, so maybe if I'd went a, a little further out of the money, chose a little bit cheaper contract, uh, used a little bit less capital, I would not have would not have felt maybe as emotional as I did when this started pulling back and moving against me. All right, so this is the trade that I did muff for full transparency. However, still green on the day, profiting over five hundred dollars, ten percent in the account challenge, and we are really rolling on this thing now. That's it. That's all that I have for you today. Thank you so much for your time. Press the like button for me if this video has helped you out and consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. It's just the best way to support me as a content creator. Thank you so much, and I will see you tomorrow when we continue the $1,000 account challenge. Cheers.